So this example two has five parts. And the first one, this part A, is similar to example one, uh, part A here. So this is my solution for part A. And if you look at, again, this is basically the distribution of these three stress values. Um, on the very left, this is the total stress sigma. So total stress, if above water table, as I mentioned, you use either moist or dry, depending on the condition of the soil. For this problem, we're given moist soil uh, unit weight, gamma M. So you use 10 times 90, and that's 900 PSF. Um, so one thing I want to uh, emphasize on your chart or when you're reporting results, remember to include units. So I'm including units uh, right here at the top. Okay. So remember to include units in your answer as well. So this is 900 PSF. Then the total stress at the bottom at point B is 900 plus 20 times 110. So this 20 is the thickness of that saturated layer times the saturated unit weight. And that's 13, uh, 3,100. So that's total stress. Then pore pressure, zero above water table. And then at point B, that's 20 times unit weight of water, 62.4. So that's how I get this 1248 number. And finally, that effective stress is the difference between these two stress values. So total minus pore pressure. So we have 900 for point A, and then 1852 for point B here. Okay. So that's, again, it's this very similar to the previous example, uh, example one. And then what I want to show for this example, uh, part B here is, uh, I'm going to use a buoyant unit weight to calculate the effective stress. So let's look at part B here. So for part B, so we're focusing on this point B. So for point B, uh, first, um, the point unit weight only exists below water table. Okay. So for the first 10 feet of soil, it's moist. So there's nothing changed there. And then for the second layer, so gamma buoyant. So that's a buoyant unit weight for this 20 feet of saturated layer. Okay. It's saturated unit weight minus unit weight of water. So if you substitute 110 and then 62.4, so the saturated unit weight is 47.6 PCF. Okay. So that is a buoyant unit weight of uh, soil in the saturated layer. So then sigma B prime. Okay. So this effective stress at point B for again, for that 10 feet of moist soil, nothing changes there. So it's 10 times 90, okay. So that's for that 10 feet of moist soil plus 20 feet of point unit weight. So that's 20 times, so let me actually break this down to two steps. So this is a buoyant unit weight. So these two terms within the parentheses, that's buoyant unit weight. And if you substitute numbers, uh, same answer. Okay. So that's another way to calculate effective stress. Okay. For a saturated soil layer, you can directly use the buoyant unit weight. Okay. And um, oftentimes the second approach is faster. So if you know the saturated unit weight, you can calculate effective stress uh, pretty quickly. And then for, there are a few other uh, questions for this example. Uh, for the third question of this example, part C here. So we're, do, we're going to calculate change in effective stress. So I'm going to estimate or calculate this change in effective stress if water table changes. I have listed three different scenarios. So part C, D, and E of this example are three different scenarios. Okay. The first one is water table drops by five feet. Okay. 
and then add a condition here. So we'll continue to use this gamma moist for soil above water table. So to calculate this change in effective stress, so let's put the water table at its new location. So we drop the water table by five feet and this is the new water table. Okay. Now let's calculate effective stress change at point B. Okay. So at point B, so before uh, water table drops, before water table changes. So let's call this uh, sigma B prime zero or not. So that's what we calculated from part uh, A. So that's uh, 1852. And to calculate the change, so we need to estimate sigma B after, sigma B prime after water table drops. Okay, so after this change, so this time we have 15 feet of moist soil. And then we have 15 feet of saturated soil below the new water table. Okay. So I'm going to use directly the buoyant unit weight this time. Okay. So this is faster way to calculate uh, effective stress. So 15 times moist unit weight, 90. Okay. So that's that moist soil layer plus 15 feet of buoyant unit weight. So saturated soil. Okay. So that's the, basically the new effective stress at point B after water table drops. So this is again, Gamma SAT. Right. So if you substitute these uh, values, the new effective stress after water table drops, this is 2064 PSF. Okay. Pound per square foot. So 2064, that's a new value of effective stress at B after water table changes. And then the change in effective stress, delta sigma B. This is the difference between the new effective stress and the original one. And this value is 212. So this value here is a positive number, meaning your new effective stress is increased. So it's larger than the original one. So, so this means if you are dropping water table, if you're lowering your groundwater table, the effective stress in the saturated soil layer will increase. So this is uh, the implication of this uh, will become clear after we discuss consolidation. So that's chapter 11. So effect of this increase of stress in the soil is actually an increase of settlement. It's an increase of deformation. So that's a side effect when you are lowering your groundwater table. So say in a construction project, you're dropping the water table, ground, you're pumping water table in the excavation. And the effect of that is you're inducing uh, basic settlement. So you're increasing the effective stress in the soil. Okay. But this is something we'll discuss in chapter 11, consolidation. So that's part C, the water table drops by five feet. Okay. And then uh, there are a couple other scenarios. Uh, the second one here is the water table rises to the ground surface. Okay. We're going to rise water table back to ground surface. So it rises basically 10 feet uh, to ground surface and the last scenario, part E, is the water table rises five feet above ground surface. Okay. 
so this is five feet So these two scenarios, the rising water table. And for both cases, the initial effective stress at V is what we calculated from part A. So this is, again, 1852. So for both the cases, again, uh, effective stress at B, the initial value is what we calculate from part A, 1852. For the first one, this part D here, this is relatively easy. So you have water table at the ground surface. So we can simply use the buoyancy unit weight since now all soils are saturated. So you can see it's 30 feet of saturated soil. So it's 30 times 110 minus 62.4. Okay. So after water table rises to the ground surface, all soil is saturated. So we have one unit weight of 30 feet basically. And this gives us 1428 PSF. Okay. And then if you take the difference, you get a negative number, 424 PSF. So this means effective stress at B decreases. So this means the effect of rising water table is that the effective stress in the soil decreases. And then for part E. So in this case, water table rises five feet above ground surface. So we have basically all water here. So this is our water. So it's like a five feet of lake above ground surface. And for this problem, actually, uh, there are two different approaches to take. So I'll, I'll go over the first one. So you can use total minus core pressure to calculate sigma B. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this equation, this effective stress equation always applies. So no matter what the conditions are, you can always use total minus core pressure to get effective stress. So that always applies. So this is this approach one. So for this approach, you have total stress, five feet of water above ground surface. Yeah. And then you have 30 feet of saturated soil. Okay. And pore pressure at point B is simply the height of water or the distance of uh, from point B to free surface, so that's 35. Okay. And you can plug in numbers, gamma saturated, gamma water to calculate effective stress B. So gamma saturated, again, this is 110, and this is 62.4. Okay. So you can plug in numbers, and this will give you 1428. So your effective stress after water table rises is 1428. And if you compare this to the previous part, part D. So notice it's the same. So the effective stress, if water, cha water table changes above ground surface, it is nothing to your effective stress. Okay, so this is same as part D. And then we know that the change in effective stress is the same. So it's basically 1428 minus 1852. So it's negative 424 PSF. Don't forget the unit. So it's the same as part D. So that's the first approach. And the second approach. So the second approach is to recognize that any water table above ground surface does not contribute to effective stress. Okay. The reason being that uh, water weight, the weight of the water above ground surface 
is accounted for in the total stress calculation as well. So if you take the difference of that uh, from uh, between that and the pore pressure, they're going to cancel out. So, so this is, if you recognize that you can continue using that uh, buoyant unit weight definition. So it's 30 feet of buoyant unit weight. So this is recognizing that, so any water table change above ground surface will not affect your effective stress in the soil. And this is for water table above ground surface. So if water changes below ground surface, it definitely affects effective stress. So if you recognize that, then you can simply ignore any water body above ground surface and you have 30 feet of saturated soil layer. And that's why I have this second equation here. And the result is the same. And the difference is negative 424 PSF. Okay, so that's part two here, uh, part E here, for example, two.